welcome. Um, do we want to go around and do introductions again? I know, I think we kind of know each other. Mm -hmm. um, but we can. Do we do it every time? Introductions? We don't have to. No, we okay. don't. I don't, no. I don't okay. think okay. that's just for, necessary. Just for okay. like the first few times or if there's anybody new. Okay, perfect. Um, public comment? Okay. Okay. So um, I will jump right in if that's okay with everyone. Yeah. Um, okay. So you will have the agenda. All right. So a couple of things. Um, first off, we have a staffing update. Um, we have a new paraprofessional that is also going to be serving as a sub whenever needed. So her role is sub, and then if no sub is needed, then she will be um, a paraprofessional in the mechanical corps. Um, and it is Marie Conley. She was the school counselor that was at RTCC last year. Um, so she's back in a new role. And then um, our, one of our English teachers, Robert Jackson, is um, out to sea currently in Abu Dhabi. Um, he'll be returning in two weeks from break, if that makes sense. So not the week after break, but the following week he'll be returning. But in the meantime, um, Marty McMahon is taking his place as long-term sub. And when Marty is done as long-term sub and Robert comes back, Marty will be our new work-based learning coordinator. Um, and he has a long history of um, working in the technical trades, um, as well as having worked at a tech center in the past, um, in the recent past, and um, he's a former English teacher, and so I think he's going to bring a lot to the RTCC community, and he already is working there and is doing a great job. Um, I have a slideshow this evening um, to kind of talk through some of my points. So I'm going to move towards that. Um, OK, so I want to talk a little bit about recruitment and in the aftermath of recruitment. So this year, um, we decided that we were going to take a group of us, um, myself, uh, a selection of adults, and a selection of students. Um, that represented different programs as well as our food truck uh, filled with cookies and uh, t-shirts and all sorts of swag um, and just exciting like little things little things that we were going to give away um, and we were going to go visit each of the six sending schools and so we have four primary sending schools and then we have two schools that where we have programs that their nearer sending nearer tech centers do not have so they can send students to those programs only so um, for example um, I'm trying to think of uh, agriculture might be one at a particular school or um, diesel for an example so six in total but really four that are our actual sending schools and then, then these other two kind of ones that um, we decided to visit as well. So I'm going to show just very briefly the slideshow that um, that we used. I'm just going to kind of scan through it quickly. Um, uh oh, wait a minute. Share this tab instead. All right. So what we did was We went and we asked to have um, all students in grades uh, 9 through 11 come to view our presentation so that everybody, regardless of whether they thought they wanted to go to the tech center or not, had the opportunity to see all of our offerings. And they might see something that they liked and decide that they want to check it out. So some of the schools did allow that to happen, and that was amazing. We had huge audiences, hundreds of kids that were listening and excited about the tech center. But in other schools, um, we they some other schools completely canceled and said there was zero interest, or we presented to an entire school, like 170 kids in one case, and not one person applied. So. I don't know, I don't, I don't know what that means, but that is what happened. 
So what this is, is a slideshow that includes a video for each program. Um, and all the videos were made by our um, digital film teacher, Lance Madzi. They're fantastic. They're engaging, there's fun music, um, personal interviews with kids. So this first one is just a really cool video that, that talks about all the different programs we have. Um, we explained who we are, what we're about, and all the different programs that we have in this way. And then each program had some pictures and had a video link. So people from each of the programs spoke about their programs and then we watched the video. Um, we did that for each program, as you can see. Um, Digital Film made all of the videos, so we let them know that. Um, but each one had its own really, really um, interesting and, and, and wonderful video that was, I think, really, really enticing for each of the programs. So we did that. Um, we talked about pre-tech. The pre-tech teacher came along for, um, I want to say most, I think there was one he didn't come along for. Um, but recruited sophomores to join pre-tech, and that was pretty successful. Um, we explained to them that there are things that we have that they may not realize we have, that they may have been concerned about missing out on, like prom and yearbook and, you know, things like dances and the bonfire and yoga, and we have all that. Um, and we talked about um, our math and English classes and how small they are and how much individualized attention that students will get. Um, we talked about IRCs and gave an example of how if you were college bound, what you could do to get even higher level courses like AP Biology, for example, that you could take it at RU um, or do an online course. And we talked about co-ops and that you can make money doing your co-op and earn credits. Um, and we talked about like all the things that we're looking for in an RTCC student. And if you guys remember from last time, I had talked about um, the idea of having an academy program and of having um, math, um, like in an entrance exam, but it, that sounds so, so heavy. Um, basically a, a math check to see where students are, to kind of get an idea so that we can gauge the types of math that we need to teach, like at what level. Um, and we wanted to elevate um, our programs so that students knew that this is not only academic like you're at your high school, but it, you're also learning an entire trade. So it's both. And you have to sort of be, you know, have rigor and be ready and willing to learn and engage. And this was a different learning experience um, that was really special. And so we talked about that a lot. Um, we talked about our program coach um, being, or program teacher being like a coach, and each program is its own team, um, and that we're getting workforce and college ready. And so these are all the things that we told the kids. We told them also about some of our rules, like we need to pass all of our classes and put our cell phones in our cell phone box, which has been pretty successful. Um, we talked about the limited unexcused absence policy, the no more than 10 times a year can you be unexcused absent. Um, and that we put safety first at all times. All of those things, um, our brief knowledge check of math, and then we had our QR code so kids could take a photo with their phone and apply. And um, I was feeling really great, like the reception that we got from uh, many of our sending schools were just, it was just so warm, and it seemed like the kids were so, so, so into it. Um, but currently where we're at is that our numbers are, are lower this year than they have been in the recent past. So I did want to be um, clear about that. I am excited about the, the types of applicants that we've seen so far. Um, they seem very engaged and very excited about the programs. And in a few minutes, I will talk about our program numbers. Um, so I'm gonna keep going through here. So we went to Williamstown, Northfield, and White River Valley, and RU, all of which allowed us to do an hour-long presentation. We had the cookies, the videos, the slideshow, the swag, question and answers. Um, we were able to meet with all the students in grades 9 through 11, and some of those places we took the food truck as well, so we really tried to... Did you stop presenting? Did I? Oh, oh, oops. 
Oopsies. Sorry. It's okay. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, so of these four sending schools, you did a one-hour presentation. I feel like I caught you. Somebody, you you said you had some mm -hmm. cancellations. Yeah, that's on this this um, right here. So, okay. yeah. <clears throat> so you thirty-two and Spalding are schools that only send students to a small number of our programs because they don't have those particular programs at our school. Sure. Um, but unfortunately, um, they contacted us and said that, that no students were interested, but we didn't get a chance to present to them to know if they were interested. Um, I still plan to reconnect with them in the spring and see if now maybe is a good time at that time to come and, and do our visit. And we're gonna keep enrollment open. Um, so that people can apply throughout the spring, the rest of the winter, and into the summer. Um, Spalding had four students that they had pre-selected for us to meet with. Um, so unfortunately, we didn't get to present all our all the available programs to those two schools. So of the four sending schools and the presentations that you did, how many were all school and how many were? Yes, so Williams, kids. Williamstown was grades 9 through 11. Um, Northfield made an announcement over the intercom and said anyone interested in hearing about RTCC come down to the auditorium. And White River Valley gave us everybody from 9 to 11. And actually, I think there were some visiting 8th graders or some 8th graders in the building who came as well for part of the assembly. I didn't put 8th grade in there because I wasn't entirely sure of like... A, a group of kids came in and left, but I'm pretty sure they were eighth grade. But and White River really rolled out the red carpet, as as did Williamstown, Northfield. Like I said, just the ones who were interested over the intercom. And how many was the Northfield? Roughly. Fifteen. Okay. So then we followed up. So before our visits, myself and our school counselor went out to meet each sending school principal. Um, and introduced ourselves to them, the school counselor, just to make connections because I feel like it's easier when you know who you're talking to rather than just emailing or talking on the phone. So we went and we did that and that went really wonderfully with all the schools. Um, then we went and made our appointments to speak and do our presentations. Um, and then we followed up with an invitation for the students to come for three and a half hours to do a tour of their top three programs. They spent an hour in each program and then they had lunch in the cafeteria with our school counselor. And then they went back to their sending school at 1230. Um, so we had a lot of visitors for that. That was pretty cool. Um, we also had, um, make sure I didn't miss anything here. Um, yep, so currently teachers are in the process of reviewing program applications. Um, we also had a parent and student, prospective parent and student night. Um, our first one was the day of the snowstorm that was canceled. Um, it was canceled due to a snowstorm. Um, so we rescheduled and we, we had a few people at this event, but it was meet the instructors, there was a uh, slideshow presentation, program tours, Q&A, nice desserts from culinary, um, and so we did do that. And the next step now is that teachers are going to go through all of the applications and they're going to decide if students meet the criteria, and then they're going to conduct interviews with the students. And then when that's all finished, we're going to keep enrollment open, but we're going to then let people know that they've been accepted to RTCC. Um, I just want to say I'm very open to suggestions. If you have ideas for anything further, I have been sending out um, our newsletter monthly, and I include all of our sending schools and all of the counselors at the sending schools. Um, and we are in pretty frequent communication, like weekly, bi-weekly, depending on which school it is. Like some of the principals I talk to multiple times a week, depending. Um, so we're definitely present with them. Um, but <coughs> there's, I know there's still time, but I just wanted to be very clear about where we're at right now. So I have specific numbers for you. So currently, for this year, our current enrollment is 119 students, which includes pre-tech. 
The breakdown um, for current total enrollment is here. So it's down from 128 on your paper to 119? Mm-hmm. Yep, there are some students that um, went back to their sending schools due to disciplinary behaviors or having um, highly, <coughs> uh, frequently absent or um, not accessing their education because they were not passing their classes, so therefore not earning credits. Um, and then we had at least one person who decided that they just missed their friends and wanted to go back to their sending school. So that's where we're at with that. Um, On to a different topic. Pre-tech this year, when I came to RTCC, allowed ninth grade students to join pre-tech. And so most of uh, the tech centers in the state start at 10th grade for pre-tech. And the reason for that is that you cannot place, or you're, well, you're not supposed to place 10th grade students in hazardous occupations. So 10th grade students start in pre-tech and then juniors and seniors can go into the actual programs that have more hazardous components. Um, but also you run into a situation where if a student starts at the tech center in ninth grade, then they could potentially be there for ninth grade, 10th and 11th doing their program and then have to go back to their sending school for 12th grade because some schools pay for two years of program and some schools will extend, but that's not always the case for everyone. So to avoid both of those situations, we've decided to align ourselves more with what other tech centers are doing in Vermont, which is that we're gonna be accepting students in grade 10 for pre-tech. And then grades 11 and 12 can participate in all of the other programs. Um, I just put our February newsletter in. Do you, do you all get the newsletter? I'll have to update my email address. Uh, okay. Yes. I'll update it. I get it. Yeah, that'd be great. You get it? Good. Okay, mm -hmm. perfect. Um, so, you know, just really briefly, I'll just click on this. So we do a monthly newsletter. Here's our application. It goes to all of our parents, students, staff, people in our district, um, sending school principals and school counselors. Um, and we have updates from some of our classes. I try to feature different classes every time. We have lots of pictures that um, I take while walking around the school, checking out all the neat things that we do. It's not showing on the screen. Oh, it's not showing. Oh, God, I don't know what I keep doing. Share this tab instead. Thank you. Sorry, I totally thought you could see what I was looking at. Can you see it now? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay, see education let me go there. back here. So yeah, <laughs> sorry about that. So updates. Here's your, um, click the link to enroll at RTCC. Um, pictures of our students doing fun activities. Um, we had a fun day at RTCC and like students were hanging out in programs that they are not usually in, doing activities that they don't normally do, which was really sweet. Um, and so these are, these are pictures from around the tech center. And you know, we just wanna showcase all of the kids and like the different projects that they're working on. Um, these three teachers all turned 53 recently, so we had a little fun happy birthday to them. Um, the uh, electrical program collaborated with Randolph Elementary School and made this really cute rocket for their reading program. Um, and there you see it there. Um, just reminders for parents and information about upcoming events and um, classes that students can take at CCV. Um, but we try to do you know something different every time and something you know just that really celebrates kind of like what we're doing at school. Um, so let me go back and share this tab instead. All right, good. So boop. upcoming. Um, we have Career Challenge Day with Vermont Works for Women. Um, we're gonna be hosting that with them on Tuesday, March 19th from 8.30 to 2 p.m. for um, females and gender expansive students in grades six through nine. Um, I included the poster here, but it's also in our newsletter. And so that's one really exciting thing that we have coming up that I wanted to let you know about. And then if you go back to the meeting agenda 
on here, um, you'll see at the bottom of the first page, it says 2024-2025 requests so far. So you'll see um, we have a lot of incomplete applications, like a, a huge number of them. Um, and what that means is that a student applied, or they, they started their application, but their school counselor mm -hmm. has not yet uploaded the um, the rest of the information that we need to complete their application, such as their attendance, their grades, and any discipline records. And so we're at a standstill right now while we're waiting for a, a huge number of applications to become complete. So, so those aren't listed here. These are, those are not listed. These are complete applications. These are complete yeah. applications. Uh, no, no? No. So the way I listed it for you, no, yes. the way I listed it for you was we have 103 fully submitted applications. Okay. Of those 120, or 103, 28 counselors have put in all of their information. So 28 of the 103 have been marked as completed. Okay. So then these are not necessarily complete applications. These Correct. are just a breakdown of that. Okay, thank so you. 103 applied, 20. 28 are complete. Are completed and can be interviewed or Mm -hmm. Right for the next step. Right, right. And then there's 40 unsubmitted applications as well. So that means the student hasn't finished their okay. piece. Do you have a deadline for schools for that? It was February 2nd. But we're just going to keep it rolling. Mm -hmm. Because why not? Yeah. Yeah. And so, and I know we'll get students applying all through the summer, so it might as well. Right. But we definitely did have a deadline and, and sent out um, mm -hmm. uh, a calendar reminder to all the sending schools. But that's okay. Yeah, like, we're you're flexible. Gonna, you're gonna change right up until the first day of school. Right, exactly. Okay. Yep. This is our... Yep, that's okay. So, okay. Um, on the back page, um, we had talked last time about two potential academy programs. One of them was um, the education program, and we had talked about moving towards an outdoor education focus, which I actually had a meeting about it today. Um, the state really wants to keep the focus not on outdoor education, but on education in general. So the, the, we may still be able to incorporate pieces of outdoor education, but it can't be the focus. You're referring to the to AOE or? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so because there is such a teacher shortage and a paraprofessional shortage, um, the idea is that we really do need to recruit people to become teachers or paraprofessionals. But it's very difficult to, to get kids interested in teaching kids when they're still a kid themselves. And I think that that's a thing that it's sort of hard to wrap their mind around. Um, so we're working on that, and we do have some ideas for advertising um, that are kind of like taking a different, new, fresh angle on education. So we're gonna, that's coming soon. Um, but the other idea that I had mentioned last time was the agriculture program um, being expanded to include animal husbandry and veterinary science. And so um, we've been working with Heather, who has um, been, working with um, Ruth from the state to to apply for um, a grant for the Learning Barn, which we talked about before. Um, that is still in its developmental phases, but we're moving forward. Um, and so I'm really, really excited about that, and I'm hoping to have um, a kitchen, a classroom, three stalls, and some pasture space. Um, and so I'm really excited about that. I just Need, you know, we're we're waiting. We're waiting on Kentucky Derby winners, right? Good, guys, we're <laughs> working on that. Yes. I'm getting serious. Yes. I no. I mean, that would be amazing. Um, so yes. So we're waiting to hear about a lot of things. Like we have to have it built by September 30th, and we have to make sure that the grant is approved for that. And so we're we're in a holding pattern right now. But I wanted to update you and let you know that that is still very much something we're very excited about. Um, last time there was a question about adult education and where we stand with that. And so I wanted to update you. That is kind of like the, the couple of paragraphs here. Um, so the adult education coordinator, um, who is also our curriculum coordinator, has been reaching out to um, the places that you see here, um, the Vermont, excuse me, Vermont Adult Learning 
um, Vermont Rural Water, Short Notice, um, which is a restaurant town, and La Penciata Bakery, if I said that right, I hope I did. Um, but he is trying to figure out what people are interested in learning about as, as adults. And so he created a, um, survey. Sure. thank you, a survey. Um, he created a survey and he sent it out and he only got a few responses back. Um, and to my knowledge, the responses that he received were sort of a little all over the place, like like maybe one person wanted one thing and two people wanted this, but there was no like area where someone was, like, you know, there were 10 people interested in one thing. Um, so it was kind of all over the place. And so he started looking into all the different things that could be available. And one of the things that I think would be amazing um, is it's the third um, little little bullet down. It says Dominic Yetz. He's our auto instructor at RTCC. He wants to run a basic auto class um, and do, I'm going to get it all wrong, but he wants to do like uh, teach people how to be inspectors, like state inspectors, do mm -hmm. brakes, change tires. Um, and he's talked about a couple other things. He's really, really excited about that. He's also interested in welding. He's a welding instructor at BTC, but he was interested in teaching welding. We don't have a huge welding setup where we could teach a large number of people on our campus, but he definitely could teach the auto basics. So that's one thing. Um, the owner, Justin Loati, if I'm pronouncing his name right, from La Penciata Bakery, he was um, at our school yesterday, um, and he was looking at what we have uh, in our culinary program in terms of equipment and space, um, and thinking and talking about possibly doing a class with uh, make your own pasta, um, rolling it out, making it, cooking it, all of that. Um, and so we're also working, or he, I should say that he is really working um, with the um, Vermont Adult Learning Center about their heat pump training and installation program. And so we were ready to go with that, but then they needed a little more time. So we're kind of in a holding pattern right now, but we expect March, the beginning of March, um, to have some kind of smattering, smattering, if not one really strong program that people can start out with. Um, next, I wanted to let you know that we wanted to bring back summer camp this summer. And so um, there are two weeks that I've proposed to my staff and said, um, are you interested in doing a summer camp for a week, you know, this week or that week? Um, and from that came a discussion about bringing Rosie's Girls back to RTCC. And so I believe that our school counselor is gonna be doing Rosie's Girls. Um, and we have, again, our um, auto instructor who wants to do auto basics for a week. And there was one other person who said that they wanted to do it, but that they hadn't decided what they were doing. And I'm trying to think about if they had given me any ideas, but I don't think that they had. I think they said they were going to come up with something. So I'm expecting to have at least three choices for summer camp this summer. Oh, um, what's Rosie's Girls? Sorry. Oh, yes. No, don't be sorry. Um, so Rosie's Girls, I need more information, but Rosie's Girls is a camp for... I want to say it's sixth through ninth grade, but I might be wrong. But it's it's an introduction to tech type um, activities that are specific to females and gender expansive students, um, and so it's by Vermont Works for Women, and so they provide the curriculum, and then we provide the instructor in the space, and they um, advertise and help connect us with students. And then it's a great introduction to the Tech Center. So, yep, I'm very excited about that. They're coming to speak at our staff meeting tomorrow, so I will know more about how Rosie's Girls works after tomorrow. Um, I, I have a question. Yeah. Um, if these programs are go for this summer, where could the public find um, information on information it? on them yes yeah for sure so they'll be on our website they'll be on our Facebook page okay. and they'll be in the newsletter basically as soon as we settle what we're doing they'll be in the newsletter every single month until until they happen okay um, and then I'll also be able to talk about them at the next rat meeting because I'll definitely know for sure 
when they're going to be. Great. Oh, um, I forgot to add something in here, but you just reminded me when you asked about where that info will be. Um, so we've had, we've been advertising the radio for student of the quarter, um, every quarter. And so we are talking about going in a slightly different direction, but still using um, that ad space. And what we're thinking of doing is having student testimonials say, students say why they decided to come to RTCC, what program they're in, what they're learning, um, and doing different clips that where different students in different programs talk. Um, and people can hear it from their own mouths rather than um, you know, hearing it from me or hearing it from someone else. Um, I heard this morning uh, an example of what that could look like or what that could sound like, and it sounded really great. Um, so that's something that we're looking to move towards, is having students speak on the radio their own story in short snippets as advertising. Um, and I think that's everything to update you on right now. Are there any questions that you have? I'm a little concerned about the enrollment. Me too. If I'm not mistaken, weren't we in the 150s two years ago? I mean, I know we're vetting and we're getting better quality, but we were about 30 students more. So, and I can, you might be able to throw this up on the board because there's probably a pretty good mathematical relationship between the two. In 2022-23, tuition at RTCC was $18,670. This year it is $22,876, a $4,200 increase per student to go to RTCC. What was that number again, sorry, 2,000? Uh, so 22,876. So that gigantic increase was due to the fact that the previous director did not complete the Perkins grant um, that year. Folks picked it up about six months in and completed it for her, but it required people who were being paid under the grant to be paid under the regular budget. And once they are paid under the regular budget, they cannot go back to be paid for by the grant. And so my guess is they're not supposed to do this, but that huge increase in tuition per student is probably why some folks are balking. As a district, we send you know, 60, 70 of our students um, to the tech center every year. So 60 or 70 times $4,200 is about $350,000, $360,000 extra dollars that we had to pay because of that mistake. Um, and so over the course of time, hopefully what can happen is as we're building new programs, we can get some other staffing there, right, that wasn't affected by this into Perkins and try to bring those tuitions down. And 24, 25 tuition is... Um, it, we, if I remember, you did a little increase to it. Um, it was probably two or three hundred dollars per student. Yeah, it's very. It, it was very um, modest. It was under what other tech center? Many other tech centers, not all other tech centers. Yeah. So is that balancing um, out now with what other tech centers are? I can tell you that too. We were like ranked this year line. as the third expen- most expensive in the state of the fifteen that I looked at. Lane, can you give those two numbers again? I just want to put them in the notes. What they were. Sure. The, so the 2022-23, um, it was 18670 That was the tuition. Okay. And then 2023-24, it was 22876 from the numbers I got from Robin. 22876 Okay, thank you. I just wanted to note it here. Yep. So I'm looking at the um, FY22, which is their 21-22 accountability data for Randolph Technical Career Center, and there were 133 students enrolled in that year and let me see if I can find the account I'm sorry that's the 2021 that's 21 22 when it says FY 22 that's like the end they they cite the last okay. year so that's yeah. let I'm me sorry, see if I can find number? 130 yeah that was 133 okay. students um I had the whole graph I showed Nika from you our have, enroll track do you have the I left on my desk I can pull it up real quick awesome thank you yeah but we could probably do an equation of enrollment tuition Mm -hmm. and I bet there's a pretty strong correlation in terms of the relationships between them it would be a little difficult um, because some of those years were COVID years and if you can't come in and do hands-on right because a lot of it was remote learning Mm -hmm. you know you're gonna have some down years but my guess is the last year it was done because you only do the CLNA every two years years. okay so Uh, I I don't have this exact report for FY 23 
but we can get the number. If you give me just a second, I can get That would be great. Number. Because we have to have the six. Six semester average? Yeah. yeah. Do you know that number? Okay. So, in, <laughs> in, in, in No, if there's specific questions to research between now and the next meeting, we ask. And yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, I think that would be good to have um, any interest in expanding the type of classes we're offering. I mean, I'm looking, I mean, this is just pre register, right? So, yes. like Ed is one, Dental's three, Construction's two, like. Got a lot of interest in pre-tech, a lot of interest in digital film, agriculture, which is all good, culinary, that's great to see that go back up, criminal mm -hmm. justice. Is there any demand or ask that, that we should be looking at in the next few years to add plumbing, mm. um, that kind of stuff? Have we done a poll or anything? Or? Uh, nope, you go. It's okay. No, I was just, I, I would, we need to frame it the answer and also just include what's allowable right now right right so that makes so mm. I asked the hard ones we did. well because I'm thinking like I, what what I really want to know is what do kids really want to do but I don't know that hundred percent the things that kids might really want to do aligns with what the most pressing needs of Vermont are if that makes sense well the most pressing needs of Vermont do not factor into what kids are going to do and pay attention for as much as this state and country would like that unless you paint a picture so for example when I was helping a local manufacturer market why to come work in a factory that's mm -hmm. very hard work we had to paint a picture of the income the benefits mm -hmm. you can buy yourself a nice truck you can buy yourself a home we are very competitive you know so you have to paint a picture mm -hmm. listening to a podcast about tech uh, center specifically down in Texas they actually come out with a pay range when you become a master plumber you will make in the range when you start mm -hmm. X Y to B mm -hmm. electrician and build the interest just in young adults as well as students of a career choice Mm -hmm. If you're a plumber, you can make you know, sixty to eighty thousand, or whatever it was. I forget exactly. Is that something that we need to paint a clear picture of? No guarantees. We do talk about salary. That was part of our seed program. That up until our work-based learning coordinator left, like he did include and talked about that regularly with programs. With I think that students. needs to be a big picture. I think that needs to be average income in Vermont is fifty-seven, fifty-three thousand. You get enrolled as a plumber, become a mass electrician, X, Y, Z, whatever, you could be making anywhere from X, Y, Z and be above the average. That would be good in like the program description and the recruitment materials. Like Absolutely. Dental, you know, dental. It could even be part of the advertising on the radio. Yeah. You know, and you could even say like in the state of Vermont, uh, dental hygienist or dental assistants, there's a need of X, so many in the state, you, you would land a job or, you know, whatever, you could land a job in this direction however you want to word it i know what you're saying really yeah. paint the picture because a, a kid might not want to do plumbing a kid right. might not want to do welding for what he thinks it is but well see welding is really popular right. like kids really want and welding's to weld. more than just fixing trucks and welding metal welding right. is you can use it for art you can use it for underwater truck. welding is huge my father-in-law so did that up in maine back in the 90s and made very good money putting an oxygen tank underwater and welding the docks of a marine base you know That's so awesome. you know I, but i think kids need to be shown the picture mm -hmm. right yeah i shown do know the, the lookbook does include like the salary ranges mm -hmm. but really That's make right. it visual for the yeah. kids make it really like whether you get a testimony of someone that went through the program is now is a construction or in plumbing or like a good idea and saying i make it a very good career for myself Thank you. Yeah, the plumbing, plumbing piece is key too. That was a prior to that was a big discussion because we figured that would probably be a big draw um, because the idea was that we were going to try to expand out the building trades portion so that we've got all the primary pieces covered and keep putting the HVAC. Right. And then that would be the jump off point to actually be able to go out and start renovating and building houses. Um, yeah, I mean, I know a, a kid that came through the center. Four, three, four years ago, three, and now he's in North Carolina. He did diesel. Yeah. He went to college, and now he's HVAC certified, and he's doing extremely well. Yeah. 
working on air conditionings and heating. Awesome. And everything. So and if they do the heat exchangers, mm -hmm. um, that's what with adult ed is working on. That they need to combine it with um, solar. Uh, and electrical. There's a big need to for yes. elect electricians the, for hooking yeah. up solar. Yeah, because the two go together. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that the that company does. <laughs> Like I said, like talking to this factory, like I said, it's not a it's not a pleasant job, but the pay is really good, and you know we painted the whole thing. If you're a gamer, you can buy a new gaming PC and a whole setup mm -hmm. with this salary. If you're, you know, you want a new truck, you can afford the payment. Like, okay, you, you know. kind of picked out the things that they would actually be interested in in their free time, kind of. Right. Thing. Well, that because you can afford it, and then they they have on-site training. So if you don't want to do the factory work, we'll send you how to program the robotics out of it out in Michigan and you'll learn how to control a two million dollar robot arm that carves out and cuts out and do all this stuff like there's ways to like make even more money and make a career out of it and yeah I see what you're talking about. so I think like for us we had to paint that picture because they weren't getting applicants and did that and improve it, yes awesome so I just think when you're, when you're talking you. to kids, it, you know, I think a lot of kids also come from homes or, or doesn't have the vision of that they can be more than what they're at or what their right. family's been at, and, and we have to paint a picture. So just something to think about when you Absolutely will. Motivation. What, and, and ask the kids what motivates you. My son comes home from middle school, and he likes to use the cutout lasers and the 3D printers. Like, that's a direction, right? Yeah. That's a direction. He, he made stickers. He made this. So I'm like, that's awesome. Yeah. That's yeah. So it's like, yeah. you know, we're picking up on that just in the household to be like, oh, maybe that's a direction he wants to, to we go. should point him in. You know, yeah. he likes doing that stuff. So just something to think about. Yes, yeah. I absolutely will. So you say welding's super popular. Very Where popular. does it land in these, in this In list? the program? In the yeah. program. Manufacturing. In manufacturing. Um, but there's also, I want to say that at least... I know exactly who I'm thinking of. He was an auto student, and he was in there because I, I think he was interested in auto, and also that the teacher was a welding instructor, I think was a draw, too. Um, but there's also welding happening in agriculture um, and, and lots of welding happening in manufacturing. Yeah, the, the automotive, they need it, to, or they used to need it to be able to expand the metals to get the, Out of the axe. replace the mufflers oh. and some of the ball joints and stuff. Hmm. Yeah, but they love what. it. They did a yeah. project where they made like a student made the most beautiful table. It's in my office now because I said, Oh my god, who made that table? It's so nice. I would buy that. It was like a welded metal leg table with like a rustic wood top and this student mm -hmm. was like, Who made that? You can have it. So it was pretty cool. I was like, you make a lot of money making tables like this. Well nice. another student came through that did welding and woodworking and she makes beautiful furniture that could probably be in a store in New York City, right? So I mean that. you gotta paint that picture. We gotta we gotta bet that. Um good. We, you know, and, and like poll the poll of students it sounds so dull, but like just ask like, you know, what would paint the picture for you. Maybe maybe learning how to build computers. I know Vermont Computing and other computer stores in the state are having a hard time finding workers just assembling computer parts and huh. towers and Vermont Computing, where are they located? Right here in Randolph. I know in the past they were looking for people to help put stuff together and, oh. and all that, so that could be something as well. Thank you. Yep. Um, how's the cell phone policy working? Really good. I'm so really glad you good? did it. I, th I think really good. All the good. teachers on board? Um, Uh-oh. Uh, answer the truth. Um, yeah, I am thinking uh, most. But I will say that... Um, what's, the, what's the hold back on the ones that aren't? Um, I think that the ones that aren't aren't excited about asking them to put it in the box because they're already not seeing the phones. So if you walk into a room, most rooms, you'll see that there's uh, phones in the box or that the teachers put in a little charging station in the box and that kids plug them in. So that was pretty cool. I think that there are a couple teachers who the kids just put them away when they go in class, so they don't feel the need to say, like, please take out your phones and put them in the box. So Unless they have them in their pockets and using them outside of the classroom, right? Mm, so if they're in the box, yeah. you can see it. Right. Would it be better to think about next year's cell phone policy, like you said, have a place in the classroom as a charging station where all the kids plug them in? They, can they already could do that with the box they have. They, okay. like... 
different teachers have done it different ways. Like there's one teacher that had little, there were like little Adirondack chairs for the phones and the phones sit on the little Adirondack chairs. Another teacher made like a hole and put a multi-charging area right through the box so they plug in. So you can do that. It's a, it's just a box, but it's pretty versatile. The only thing I'm concerned about, and I've heard the same thing out and about, is if yeah. one teacher doesn't allow, follow the procedure, and some do, you're going to cause a division. It's not unified policy, right? So I share that concern. So when a student wants to sign up and be like, oh, dude, he lets you have your cell phone in your backpack, you should go. You know, like, mm -hmm, as right? silly as it sounds. It's not silly. It, you know, so I think, you know, it, I think this is a great first step. But we should really think about that. It's e easier Everybody. in a high school because the kids change classes. Right. So if 90% of the teachers are adhering to the policy and a few aren't, the teachers that are adhering to it will start to put pressure on the ones that aren't because of the grief looking from the kids. Because someone so lets me do it. In a, in a program where they're self contained most of the time, that they, they probably won't get that kind of cultural pressure. So. But you don't walk into classrooms and see phones out. Yeah. That's. That's. That's, that's a why. Huge I, step. Yes, that's why I said I think it's going great. Mm -hmm. Is because you really don't see phones out. Well, we have a violation policy to do, right? That's we right. Back, um, we certainly do. So that's why the students, as, as concerning as it is, if, if tuition's more, but you know, I mean, it, as far as money goes, it's probably balancing out okay. But we're definitely betting more quality and people that want to be there to learn. The idea. So we're rebuilding that. We that are stigma, which is good like yes. that's what we want and we want to be taken seriously i had a meeting with um julia schuster today um from the aoe and she was talking about i believe if it's essex she said that there is a culture of rigor and when you're accepted it says something about your your willingness to do hard work and persevere and and that you're on the right track to succeed and so that is the turnaround that, that we want to make the same, the same gains with students like that. It's not a, just a place where you go if traditional school doesn't work for you. It's, right. It is difficult to do all of your academics and also learn an entire trade all in one day. And it, it, it is. And I think that we need to <coughs> acknowledge that we're asking students to do hard work, but it has really great rewards. Um, so it is a rebuilding year. It might be a rebuilding two years. Um, it could be five years. Yeah, oh, gosh. Um, I'm just saying. <laughs> it could we, be. we got to hold our, you know, hold our feet to the fire and make sure that we're sticking with sticking it. Sticking with it, right? That's right. And, and that we're being taken seriously. Yes. Um, the other question I have is with Jeremy Lightford leaving. Mm -hmm. Who has taken over that role as far as yes, getting kids so out and work-based learning? That, so right now, um, I have been working on placing students under my work-based learning license, but okay. Marty McMahon, who is the replacement for Robert, right. cu currently the long-term sub while Robert's at sea, mm -hmm. in two weeks, not including break, Marty will be taking over. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure I understood that yeah. correctly. Okay. Yes. Um, I was just thinking about the I was just thinking about the uh, move for pre tech to tenth grade from ninth. I think that's and affecting I'm, our numbers a little too. Yeah, and I'm wondering I'm wondering the financial implications of that. Of what of the of the folks who are in pre tech now and these thirteen applicants what percentage are from center, sending schools? And what percentage are from here? So currently there's, I think, eight students in pre-tech. Um, and those students will all go to, um, there, yeah, there's four in the morning and four in the afternoon. Bless you. There were more, but those students um, went into full-time programs. Um, and so, okay, can you read? So, it? so uh, yeah, so our, we're going to have, inherently, we're going to, so we, we're going to cut out ninth. We're going to cut out some students who want to come to pre tech in ninth because we're moving it to 10th. Mm -hmm. So, we're going to lose some enrollment there. Mm -hmm. Well, but maybe, but the number is already. 
at 13, which is we already we only have eight right now. So the number is higher for next year. That won't do it. They fix it so that it shows ninth and tenth grade on that. Because remember last year we had an issue with enroll track. They could only select tenth grade. So some of our ones that were reported as tenth grade were ninth grade. I just want to make sure we double check. That. I don't know. Let's talk about that. Okay. Um, thank you. But the advantage of going to tenth grade is that we keep them longer. We keep them in year. Right. Grade. We wouldn't have to send them back in 12th grade. And, and just to be clear, not every student, not every sending school says that they have to go back. But for instance, there was a student who started in ninth grade. And so their sending school said whatever's best for the student, but it's not general practice, but they are going to accommodate the needs of the student. So they will be with us next year, but they will be doing um, two co-ops rather than being in a class like a, you know, if we get the grant for the barn will the building trades be participating in the so um i didn't want to interrupt nika while oh, she was sorry. presenting um but the uh we're, our plan is to utilize the last of the arp esser funds which are from 2021 um where we've analyzed the budget spending on that and we've identified about 200,000 that we would just have to give back. So, um, however, to do construction with federal money, they're very strict. So we need to hire um, a building firm that will comply with their accounting rules. Um, we need to post it, accept bids, hire. But what we would like to allow is in the same way that our construction trade students are currently going over to Habitat for Humanity and observing that build on a systematic basis, do the same thing. So they're in, they, they can't be the, the builders, but they can contribute. Um, if they contribute significantly, they will need to be paid in accordance with the federal laws, which are, that's, they're really concerned that there's fair pay for fair work. And that's all documented. And that would that could go for the electrical department too if the electrician exactly. comes in mm -hmm. the electrical class could go and observe and, and really the ag see. for the groundbreaking mm -hmm. and you know all sorts of things i'm so excited and hopeful for what this program <laughs> could be i think that the fact that there are animals and all the possibilities of what we could do with animals from like learning to become a farrier to making cheese and uh, raising the animals or sharing goats and, and creating products that Vermonters make um, I think it I think it just even the social emotional connection with the animals for the kids I think it's gonna be a huge draw like even thinking about it makes me happy and I haven't seen the animals yet like I just the fact that they're gonna be there and you can go out and if you're you're upset or you've had a horrible day and you can go like brush the the horses and feed the pigs like I think this is going to be a really great addition to our school I'm so be on premises or off premises right here yeah. how does that affect the new school the project that you were talking about the Lindbergh architects are going to be talking with the um, administrative team okay because part of that is okay what, what, what's your vision in terms of what your acad academics are you know what do you need for spaces we should just put the building on wheels. Good. Roll it around. Go. Less taxes. Move it. <laughs> <laughs> Two feet every six months. <laughs> you, got, you, got, you got the heavy equipment to do it. Right? Yes. Uh, get a diesel mechanic going. You can get a truck to do it. So five, okay. side, five minute check. <laughs> um, yep. That's it for me. It, behaviors it seems like you got under control because some have been sent back how's yes. the i've heard there's been some social gatherings from the high school down to the tech center in the last few months kids coming down visiting with other students has that been really a big issue or is it from handled? from the high school to the tech center yeah. I, no not that i know of um okay. i think maybe sometimes in the other direction sometimes our students okay. go to the high school um okay. sometimes um, our nurses at the high school and not at the tech center so sometimes students go there but also a lot of our students have connections or significant others right. or they are connected to a particular adult at the high school and so they do sometimes wander um, but less than I thought would be the case okay. so that's not our biggest problem at all yeah 
Definitely not. That's it for me. Thank you so much for your help. Yeah. Um, I have a couple questions. Sure. Um, one is, are numbers lower in other nearby tech centers? Have you checked? Our next closest tech center uh -huh. said that their their numbers are quite high uh -huh. this year. Um, so I've heard various things. I've heard that in some schools, numbers are a little lower. Some schools are turning people away. Um, so I think it's really... Uh, individualized okay and then uh, another question I had was you had mentioned that you um, testing was going on like to gauge for um, like math when uh, yes a student was applying yes yes we're gonna do a knowledge we're gonna call it a knowledge check okay um, yeah to see where they're at because mm -hmm. what we need to examine or we need to break down is what type of math, like what level of math right. we need to teach next year. Okay. Um, so right now we're doing like everyday math, and business math, um, like applied math, um, mm -hmm. but we may need, depending on the needs of the students, we may need to do higher level algebra. Okay. And we, we just want to know where they're at and not just make an assumption and say, this is the math we're teaching. We wanna, yeah. You know what I mean? We want to just make sure right. it really suits the kids that are actually there. Are you doing that with any other subjects or just math? We had only talked about it for math. Okay. I believe. Did you have a suggestion? No, just wondering. Just Details, curious. Biology. Yeah, science or. No, we definitely did not talk about it with okay. science. We did give applicants the heads up about the math. Okay. Um, <laughs> and then. Another question I had, um, or maybe it could be a suggestion as to what we were talking about, um, bringing up having the ninth grade involved earlier with um, the pre-tech. Um, and this may already be happening, was um, for 12th grade, rather than going back to their schools, um, or is it a possibility to fast track and have them do classes like, like at early BTC? college yeah. yeah that's that's already um, okay a thing okay um but like for instance in the case of the the example that i gave the the that wasn't an interest okay um they really love the program that they're in and mm -hmm. they really want to do a third year in that program and so okay um we found a really creative way to still make that work with the help of the sending school principal who was like I really want this I want the student to be happy I like mm -hmm. that yes we can accommodate this request um, but yes that is definitely a thing that can happen it's just a matter of if the students interested in that. right great thank you thank that you for it. asking cool. thank you guys oh, we're like oh, right on you. time I think actually Sorry. Does that. Yeah. I just want to make sure do you Approve of the meeting minutes from last meeting. Do we need to? Do we have motion? A motion. I motion. Do we approve it? My motion moves to approve. I'll second. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor, please aye. say aye. 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 Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. 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 Thanks